This article is a fun one for me, stemming from a really personal interest in trying to understand what I should do, what I need to do, what I can do in terms of using the things that I find deeply problematic. When Twitter turned into X and turned into something quite different, I had to kind of figure out how do I deal with this? What should I do as a person, as a researcher, as an AI ethicist? In the article, I described three key potential roles of an AI ethicist, uh, or an ethicist in general. One is to do AI ethics as a way of trying to identify different potentially ethically relevant consequences. So if we take X as an example, what are the implications of people using X and X being used and shaped and developed the way it is? You could say that it impacts uh, public discourse this way, it impacts democracy this way, it impacts individuals that way, and you'll leave it at that. You've now mapped out some sort of landscape of ethical impacts. You do descriptive AI ethics. But then we take it a step further into normative AI ethics. You map out stuff, or you take someone else's mapping, and then you say, this is good, and this is bad, this is really bad. So you actually do this normative evaluation of it as well. But then the next step would be the action AI ethicist, which entails not just saying that something is good or bad, but then acting upon these evaluations. It doesn't naturally follow. I can just be this kind of guide in this ethical landscape. I can tell you or tell people kind of what's right and wrong. I can give you a map and I can tell you where you should go, but I won't go there with you. One problem then uh, with the doing descriptive AI ethics would be that this idea, this notion of the researcher as detached from what we study, is fictional, uh, it's illusory. As soon as I study something, as a human being studying human social phenomenon, I influence it. So it's impossible to be fully kind of this objective, fully detached observer, I think. And then of course, I think it's insufficient because I think it's also necessary to say that something is good and bad as well. We need at least some people to do at least normative AI ethics as well in order to try to figure out what's good and bad, what are our values and norms and what should we pursue, what should we not pursue, what should we do about this myriad of potential ethical impacts out there. And then you get into normative AI ethics, which is more problematic, because there you actively say that, uh, yes, these are the potential impacts here, and I, as a person, rely on a particular ethical framework, for example, and state that something is good or bad. But then you get into all these kinds of problems if you try to leave it at that, right? Once you start studying and evaluating and figuring out that something is bad, that's where I see you run into all these charges of hypocrisy and complicity and all these sorts of things. I think it's interesting to see if there is this step from evaluating what is good and bad to actually acting upon these things. We can draw on some really interesting ethical theories and frameworks to try to understand this dilemma. And there are discussed the key ethical theories, I guess, of consequentialism and deontology and virtue ethics. If you follow the philosophy of Arne Ness, for example, so he has this kind of seven principles that leads up to the creating this idea of a problematic worldview. And then the eighth principle is, if you agree with all of this proceeding, you have a duty to act upon it, right? You have a duty to try to affect change. So these sorts of ethical frameworks is useful and fun to use to try to identify means of action and what is ethical or not.